Welcome, 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 welcome. Nice to see you. We're going to start making the famous dinner date pasta. Um, this is a pasta they learned actually in college. It's a, a fairly easy casserole, has a lot of cheese in it, and uh, it's very, very good. I remember my family, I cooked it for them probably my sophomore, junior year in college, and they were like, wow, Jeremy, you need to, you need to make this for dates. And so I started to do that over time. I eventually made it for Jamie once we were more than just dating, but um, I thought it'd be a fun one to make tonight, and I think it's a great one for you guys to learn. If you wanna make it for your spouse, if you wanna make it for a girlfriend or boyfriend, I think it's a great one to know. It doesn't take a lot of time. And it's really good, it makes amazing leftovers. So without further ado, let's light a candle and get this evening started. Let's see if I can light it. There we go. All right. Hope you guys are doing great. It's uh, another Wednesday. Another Wednesday, all right. So here we go. I am going to start by cutting up an onion, but before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys quickly the recipe for tonight's dinner. And here we go. All right, so for the famous dinner date pasta casserole, we're also gonna make a side salad with it. It calls for anywhere from three-fourths to a pound of media po medium pasta shells, a pound of ground beef, half to a full onion, two cans of 14 and a half ounce diced tomatoes or just a full 29 ounce can, um, a package of pesto, shredded mozzarella. I do about 16 ounces, which is quite a bit, but uh, it, I think it's, uh, you should use it in this one. Grated Parmesan as well, salt and pepper, as well as vegetable or oil or pan to coat the casserole dish and then we'll make a side salad and bread, obviously that's optional. So, let's, I'll give you guys a chance to look at that for a second and then I'm going to pour a glass of white wine and we can get started. All right. <clears throat> okay. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Having a Pinot Grigio tonight. Um, all right. So first, th first thing I'm gonna do is preheat the oven to 400 degrees. We wanna get that going. And then really the second thing you wanna do is go ahead and get your water boiling. So we're gonna fill this up. All right, we'll fill that up, heat that up, cover it, and just let it go for a while. And we're gonna go ahead and start on the onion. Go ahead and cut that up. So, as you guys have probably seen, I'm doing a live stream tomorrow night. Hope you can check it out. Six o'clock to seven o'clock, I'll be performing all George Strait this week, which should be a lot of fun. I've uh, discovered just how many I like. I actually, we used to have a box set of George Strait growing up. It was like straight out of the box, I think it was called. And um, by the time I was like eight years old, I knew just about 
almost every George Strait song. Um, but I noticed there's there's a few that I've actually I, I I I that I know that I didn't know were actually never released uh, on the radio, which is pretty interesting. One of them that I found out was uh, I don't know what's it called. I'm, I'm gonna be playing it tomorrow night, but. Uh, it'll come to me in a second, but yeah, it's kind of interesting. I mean, out of all the songs he has, he actually has some great songs that have never even been released before, which is pretty, just unbelievable. He just had so many incredible songwriters. I mean, it was just such a product, the whole, from beginning to end with his voice and looks and everything, and then the songwriters behind him, and it was just a, it was a, it was a hell of a product. Um, but, you know, I don't think I've ever seen him live before, which is crazy. I, I just don't understand that side of it. I'm a huge fan, I just, I've never seen him live. I guess that should be a priority before it gets too late. Um, one thing about George Strait, man, he uses the capo and like, I don't know, for those of you that know music, you know what I'm talking about, but he uses the capo of like, I swear every freaking song, it's like, you know, if you're getting a tab for one of his songs or, or just figuring it out, you realize, geez, he, he, he does not play, he, yeah, he's just, he's a big, he's gotta use the capo, it's pretty funny. He's definitely, his thing is definitely his demeanor on stage and voice That's good. and of course the cowboy hat that's one thing I don't have yet do not have a cowboy hat eventually it's crazy I grew up in Tennessee and I'm living in Texas and I don't have a cowboy hat go figure I guess it's kind of one of those things I've always heard and thought of, you know, all hat, no cattle. It's kind of like, kind of like, do you really need the hat to be a badass? But I think in some situations you do, especially with music. Right. And if you're a true cowboy, I guess. All right. So we got our onion chopped up. And now we are going to a little oil in this pan over here. Well, there we go. All right, so just gonna put a little olive oil in this pan. I'll show you the pan in a minute. And um, heat, heat it up, put the onion on there, and then we'll move, move on from there. Have you guys, have any of you seen George Strait live? I don't know, Jamie, have you seen him live? Yeah, I'd love to see him at the rodeo if he ever plays the rodeo again, I hope he does. Um, I've been to the rodeo one time, Jamie hasn't ever been to the Houston rodeo, so we're planning on, obviously this year got canceled, but next year, gonna make a point to make sure we go. All right. So we've got our onion. What else can I be doing right now? Um, I'll go ahead and we also have these two cans of diced tomatoes. We'll open that up. Um, and I do drain the tomatoes for this. So I'll drain those here in a second. Maureen, are you in uh, are you in Austin now? Is that right? We're doing a, uh, I think we're all doing a cooking class next Sunday at uh, what is it, sur, sur la, sur la table or something like that? Yeah, that's gonna be really fun. That was a really nice gift that Ava gave uh, Jamie. Yeah, we're all gonna be doing a cooking class. We're gonna learn how to cook. I think some type of 
some version of a cast iron skillet steak, but it's got a different type of seasoning to it, and I think like a souffle, and then uh, another really cool side dish, so that'll be really, really fun. All right, so I'm gonna drain these tomatoes. Just go ahead and get that out of the way. And another big thing during this time where we can be efficient is go ahead and shred our cheese. So I'm gonna do that right now. What are you guys cooking tonight? What's your Wednesday night? meal for this week. Pizza, tacos, <clears throat> meatloaf. Ah, oh, the meatloaf. First, our, uh, I think our pan's are ready, so let's go ahead and put the onions on there. So we're just gonna let those onions soften up a bit, become translucent, and then, which will just take a minute, and then we will add the ground beef. Um, last night I kinda on a whim, or actually, yeah, uh, made a chicken pot pie. I'd never made, made it before. I don't even know if I've ever had it before. I weirdly, well there's a backstory to that, but I don't have to get into it. Um, but yeah, I've had a craving for it and want to try it. And so I was like, well, why don't I just make it? And found a great recipe. I've mentioned this guy before, but he's called, uh, I, don't, I still don't remember his actual name, but uh, the website's called Basics with Babish and he has a, another one called Binging with Babish. His big thing actually is making food from movies, cartoons, TV shows, uh, video games, stuff like that. Like if, if there's food in a movie, he'll try to recreate it, which is really cool. It's, I think that's what made him pretty popular, but he also um, describes how to make certain meals in, in, in depth, like it's a kind of another level. And uh, so I tried out his chicken pot pie recipe and uh, it was damn good. It's, it was a lot of work, but it was really, really good. So at some point I'd like to do that but my point with that was um, it made, I made my own chicken stock yesterday and it just made a ton of it. So we saved it, we have it in the refrigerator um, right here. And it's, I mean, it's really good chicken stock. Um, 
and I will show you guys how to do that at some point, but um, we, we made that, and so I had a lot left over, so I'm gonna make chicken noodle soup next week. So we're gonna do homemade chicken noodle soup next Wednesday with that uh, chicken stock, and I have a lot of leftover vegetables, so I think those will still be good next week, so we'll, we'll do that. Um, all right. Now we'll add the beef. I don't know if you can hear the sizzle, but always a nice smell. And our, well, I got the wrong sense, but scent, but uh, always a nice sound and smell. All right, so we're just gonna, we got it on low, I'm just gonna kinda, I think you all know how to make ground beef. Just mix that up. It's now preheated, so it's ready to go. Here, a little bit. Another person, if you guys like um, cooking shows or things like that, I weirdly like them. Um, there's this woman named Laura Vitale, but she, she used to have a show. I think she might still have a show. It's called Laura in the Kitchen. That's really good too. So I would recommend Binging with Babish, Basics with Babish, <coughs> or uh, Laura in the Kitchen. They're both, they're, they're really good. They, uh, they do a really good job and they have a lot of great recipes. And I mean, just, they make a ton of recipes. They just have a huge catalog of stuff you can go through, but um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It's a good way to learn and try some different things and dive into the whole world of cooking. So I'm just chopping up this, I'm just uh, chopping up this beef and mixing it with the onions right now and then we'll just kind of let that go for a little bit. So when I was making the chicken stock, it was funny. <clears throat> the uh, recommendation was either doing it for anywhere from four to 24 hours on the stove at low heat, um, which I didn't have time to do that if we were gonna have it last night, or another method which actually you can recreate it uh, to be relatively similar than if you simmer it for a really long time, just doing the Instapot. It actually worked really, really well. Um, it, it really did. I think we were both pretty impressed by it. So. And I'm always looking for ways to use the Instapot because Jamie's having to kind of convince me that it's, uh, yeah, I know it is. I just haven't, I haven't figured like ways to use it for myself. She has, but um, that is one good way to use it. I'm really excited about that because having to have something on the stove for four plus hours is pretty unrealistic unless you have a lot of time on your hands on the weekend, do it on a Sunday, but, um, but so I like that kind of just, let it go for an hour, it's not too bad. Um, I mean, you'd have to wake up to make something like that. You'd have to wake up at like eight o'clock in the morning to prep all the vegetables and then get the soup going. It's pretty crazy. All right, we're gonna let that go. That's looking pretty good. So we can um, go ahead and start shredding some cheese. Cheers again.
you haven't decided yet? Not meatloaf. <laughs> Venice and chili, nice. Yeah, I know you can't see me. I'll turn it. I'll turn it next time. I was gonna wait to show you the pan once I put the uh, t uh, tomatoes in. Um, so nice venison chili. That's always good. And Chrissy hasn't decided yet. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and do this. So we have. You could do the chicken piccata, Jamie, at some point. That'd be a good one. How about the weather and all the, uh, God, nature's just coming back. We had a tree that we were really worried about that we thought might have died in the winter storm that we hit here in Texas. Um, I thought it was for sure dead after a while, but it came back to life about a week ago. And so there's a red oak that we planted last June. It was, uh, we planted it a couple, it was a hundred gallon red oak. We had, we had somebody come in and plant it. And uh, it was a few weeks after the, I mean, a few months after the whole lockdown stuff happened and we were like, you know what, let's just, let's plant a tree and let's kind of spruce up the house a bit. And we did that and then of course the winter storm happened earlier this year and we were worried that it was gone. But uh, thankfully it's, it's spring in life right now. It was a little bit delayed, but it's coming back, which is really nice to see. And our rose bushes are really exploding right now, which that's one thing about rose bushes, especially, well really anywhere, but really they do really well here in Texas, but they are just so hardy. They can handle like extreme, both extremes. It's pretty crazy. All right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, mix this up a little bit. This cheese from HEB, for some reason, is just really weird with, it's, uh, I don't know the right way to, I'm sure there's a reason for it, but it's, it's a little bit harder to shred because it's so soft. It's really kind of squishy. This other mozzarella cheese is always, anyway. There we go, the grand reveal. All the cheese. All right, so we've got mozzarella ready. And then I'll just have to shred the um, Parmesan.
Huh, I just got a weird notification from Facebook. Live video may be blocked, but I'm, I'm playing music that's not, um, that's royalty free and it's, I'm actually, yeah, it's a, yeah, I don't know what that's about. Go ahead and shred this up. much this we're gonna grate this actually so let's definitely don't need as much of this as we have in the mozzarella just enough to kind of spread over we're gonna do two layers it's basically like a two-layered casserole I'll go ahead and show you guys that. the stove. We have our meat and our onions cooking and now we're going to add our tomatoes, two cans, diced tomatoes. Mix that up. that baby go for a little bit. Looks like our water's ready. Nice. All right. Switch back. And our neighbors that like love to thump their base. Looks like they just rolled up. Um, okay. So I'm gonna put the pasta shells in. I think I'm gonna do, I usually do the whole bag, honestly. So I need a full pound. Um, but you could do three fourths, you could do it. Well, I would say at the least three fourths. You at least want that much. Um, all right, that's good. We will get the pasta going now. That's gonna take about roughly 10 minutes. Timing's doing really well here. Okay, um, timer, 10 minutes, put that just a second. All right, so we got our cheese ready to go. Let me go back. All right, we got our cheese, and uh, now I'm going to go ahead and get this bowl ready, and get the pesto.
guys a look at this. <clears throat> it's looking really good. It smells really good. So, and then right here we have our pasta boiling, medium pasta shells. Right, that's pretty close. Just a couple more minutes of that, and then we're gonna put that in the, the bowl over here and mix it with some pesto. And we will be doing good. Some music playing for you guys still. Looks like it. Yeah, let me know if the music stops, and I'll uh, fix it. All right, let's go to. Yeah, we're good here. Actually, no. I'll switch it over to live view. Okay. I think this is. Good to go. Tomatoes are kind of letting out some of their juice. Cooking down. Everything's getting to know each other nice and well. All right. So what I'm gonna do is transfer, this is actually, I used the most difficult pot for this because it's freaking heavy. Um, we're going to put transfer our meat here. So let's do that. It's like a, a wonderful steam bath. It just smells so lovely. <laughs> That's probably a more efficient way of doing this, but ah, I say that than I feel it. Ooh, it's heavy. Yow. <laughs> All right. So we got our meat. Let me switch back over here. Music is playing. Thank you. Um, oh, I hate when that thing comes on. All right. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just simply add some pesto. This is store-bought. Um, that'd be really crazy if I was like, yeah, this is homemade pesto that I, I whipped up. Jamie's done that before. She made a, uh, what was that? Chicken pesto. 
Oh, you don't want to. You don't want to speak, do you? Yeah, okay. Something like that. So we're just mixing a pesto in here. Very complicated stuff. And you don't have to get a bowl this big, but I just like this bowl a lot for some reason. All right. So that step is ready. So this will be done in a few minutes. Okay, yeah, on top of that, I'm going to put a little bit of um, kosher salt. Not a lot, just a little bit. And a little bit of pepper. Just a little bit. Good, a couple minutes. I'm going ahead and getting stuff out for the salad. How's everybody doing? Okay. I think I might be able to get this done within an hour. I would really like that. That would be the first time it's happened. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take this casserole dish and um, put a little pan on it. How's the venison chili coming along? Chrissy, have you made a decision on what you're gonna have for dinner yet? Sorry, but what sauce are you making? Uh, so the sauce is just ground beef, um, onions, tomatoes, salt and pepper, and pesto. Just a pesto and 
Yeah, that's it. And then we'll mix that with the pasta shells here. And it's really just, it's that and then this cheese and that's it, but it's just a really good comfort food. Um, but yes, that, that is the sauce. And now our pasta's done. So now we're gonna drain that. for a second and um, then mix everything together. What are you making, Miss Start? Oh, I'm making a, a casserole. I'm making a, mom wants to let you all know that she is watching it. Everybody says, oh, that's nice. Um, hi, Mimi. Um, it's a, what am trying to say? It's a pasta casserole. It's, yeah, that's basically what it is. So, um, if you miss, yeah, you missed the beginning. So, it's a combination of that sauce with the uh, medium pasta shells. You mix that all together, and then we'll put a layer, a first layer here in the casserole dish, and then we'll put a combination of mozzarella cheese and then Parmesan cheese. Then we'll do another layer on top of the meat and pasta sauce. Or, I'm sorry, meat and pasta. And then we'll add the cheese again, both cheeses. And then you just put it in the oven for 15 minutes at 400 degrees, and then it's done at that point. So, um, yeah. All right. Set up. Yeah, so you just mix it all together with the pasta and the, the meat. You gotta have a big old bowl for this. Yeah, it is. It's it's really good, Maureen. Very good. It's a nice, it's a good middle of the week dinner, but you know it's it's good on the weekend too. Every once in a while. Right. Makes very good leftovers. We like leftovers. Makes really good leftovers. I happen to be a big leftover person. Some people just hate it, which is totally fine, but. Um, Leftovers are just so nice, you just pop it in the microwave or oven and call it a day. Um, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and layer this. I think, yeah, we're gonna go with that. So I'm gonna layer it, just try to get this to where you can see. Um, actually, I need to probably do this then. I mean, you can probably get the picture, but um, yeah. So we're gonna do a first layer here. I usually like to do a little bit less on the first layer, save the most for the top. Um, all right, so. Now we're gonna add a healthy, hefty helping of 
mozzarella. I should have said healthy, health, healthy, hefty heap of mozzarella. And then we add a little bit of the Parmesan on top of that. And deliver now, yeah. That's funny. All right, first layer's done. I'm build the second layer here. It's kind of like a lasagna idea, I guess you'd say. It's kind of like a casserole lasagna style in a way with the layering. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a really, really, really easy dinner. And it's kind of a nice comfort food type dish. I feel like kids would really like this dinner. Got a lot of cheese and just kind of has that type of makeup. All right, so yeah, we're just gonna put the rest of this pasta and meat combination in here for the second layer. And then while we, once we get this done, we'll put it in the oven and it'll take 15 minutes for that. And during that time, I'm just gonna make the side salad and uh, yeah, then we'll be, be ready to go. You guys have any vacation plans coming up? You going anywhere in the next couple of months? Got any trips you're excited about? We're going to Colorado in May for a wedding, but um, other than that, well, we're also going to Palm Springs in June, but um, we uh, don't really have any plans for the two of us yet, though. We'll, we mostly just have family vacations planned at this point, so I'm just curious to see if you guys have anything. All right. Now we got our, we're just gonna put the rest of our mozzarella on here. And I'm telling you, um, Shredding your, own shredding your own cheese makes a humongous difference. Huge difference. I've done this so many times with bag cheese and it's not the same at all. It's a totally different dish. So do yourself a favor and if you have time, uh, shred your own cheese because it, it will melt completely different. It will make it into a totally different dinner. All right, so we've got that. Add some more of this. All right. And we're ready 
to put it in the oven. All right, <clears throat> so we're gonna put this into the oven for 15 minutes. Somewhere towards the middle, it's good. And 15 minutes, all right. So, while that's going, we can knock out the delicious side salad and do a little cleanup along the way so we can just dive in when we're done. Um, So what I need to do is need to Yeah, so if you get a chance tomorrow night, if you, if you didn't hear me already, um, live stream tomorrow night on Facebook Live right here. I'll be doing all George Strait songs from 6 to 7, Central Standard Time. So join in if you get a chance. If you, even if you don't like George Strait, you know, I may do it a little differently, and you may actually like it. So I'm just cutting up some green onion here. And now, some baby spinach. Baby spring mix, I mean. Hoping this yeah, this dill looks alright. So now we're adding some dill. It's kind of our standard salad. I guess the next holiday we have coming up is Cinco de Mayo, is that right? I think that's the next one. That'll be fun. Looking forward to that. It's an excuse to have margaritas and chips and queso. Tequila. Or I guess sang <clears throat> sangria if that's your thing. Or tecate. Right. 
A little bit. A little bit more. I think that's good. And then a little bit of feta. Makes everything better. All right, <clears throat> so we're pretty much done with our salad. Besides, let's see, I put the dill in, green onion, put the baby spring mix in there, and then the feta. So we'll just put some dressing on here in a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna clean up a little bit because we have the casserole in the oven. It has another about 10 minutes, and then we'll be able to serve everything up and tell you, tell you how it tastes. Um, so, let's see. You know, one thing I thought, so many times when you use, I use a lot of these Ziplocs to uh, oil casserole dishes, but it's like, it, it's a waste for me to throw them away because you can just wipe the oil off and then just use it for something later, which I'm gonna do right now. Actually, it reminds me, we need to get small Ziploc bags. Seven minutes. <clears throat> All right. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and, we are big fans of the, we like the champagne, the Gerard champagne dressing. Salad is ready to go. minutes. I 
minutes. Salad vat. All right, we are a few minutes away, about four minutes away from being done. Um, so, humor me. <laughs> We're almost done. Oh. All right. Yeah, so this casserole is the bomb. Um, you should definitely try it sometime. I would say, I'm trying to think of the, what I've done so far in these little videos, uh, or live streams, which my favorite one is. Um, and honestly, so far I would say, a couple of the first ones I did were my favorite just because they don't take terribly too long. They take about within an hour. And I really like those dinners where, where you know, I, I, I think if you can knock out a really good meal within an hour, that's about as good as it gets. Um, the chicken parmesan is one of my favorite. The rustic Italian tortellini soup is definitely one of my top five. And then um, this one's up there. This, this is definitely up there just because it doesn't take, usually if I probably wasn't doing this live stream, it might take within an hour. This is kind of taken probably closer to an hour and 10, hour and 15, but typically it would probably take about an hour. Um, and like I said, I mean, we eat it from beginning to end, the whole casserole, it's leftovers, and we finish it all up. It's great for lunch, it's great for dinner the next night. Um, so yeah, that's always one of my go-tos is, is this one. Um, but I will say last night when I made the, it took a long time to make it, but it, it was, it's very satisfying on the, on the other side to make a dish that takes a really long time because you, you learn to really appreciate the different processes that it takes to make things take, taste better and to make things, the texture of things better. And um, it's pretty neat. I think the, the one thing I was worried about last night was the, the crust on the top of the um, uh, chicken pot pie because it's a homemade and you make it almost like a, a like dough and you refrigerate it. And when you make the dough, you cut in the butter with the flour, which is kind of an interesting process. And then you, anyway, once you get the right consistency, you also, you want the, you want to use ice water when you're making the dough. And you really have to make sure you don't put too much water in there. You kind of have to measure it out in a way. So it's a pretty specific process, but it made a difference because when it came out last night, that crust was crumbly, but it was just, it was a, really nice consistency. So again, I would mention, check out the uh, basics with Babish, because he really does, I mean, it's complicated, takes some time, but if you try it on a weekend or Sunday, one of his uh, recipes, you'll be pretty amazed at how good it is if you, you know, follow the steps and, and do it right. But, um, but then, yeah, I mentioned Laura Vitali. Another really good one is Chef John. I don't know if you guys have heard of Chef John, but he's a really good one to look at. He's pretty popular online. Uh, he has a, a website called Food Wishes. So if you look up foodwishes.com, he has a ton of recipes. He's, that's actually where, when I did the Greek food um, about a month ago, it was one of his um, processes, one, one of his recipes. Um, and it, it came out really good the first time. So 
I'm always impressed by people when you, when you try it for the first time and it's just like really, really good. It just means, to me, that means they really explained it well in their recipe and they, they really broke it down for you and made it pretty easy to learn. So um, that's always nice to find people like that. All right, so our pasta should be done now, our casserole, and we're gonna take it out and I'll show you guys. And then we're gonna put it in a bowl and eat it. Put it on a plate and eat it. All right, so let me set this out for you guys. Wow, we have quite a delay. All right, um, I'm gonna wait until I see myself. Okay, yeah, so here we go. This is our final product. Um, date night pasta casserole. Date night pasta casserole. Really good, delicious. Please try it sometime. Uh, I think you'll be very happy. Um, all right, so I'm gonna dish this up and I'll show you the pretty plate and I'll take a bite and then I'll sign off and send everybody on their way. I know you've got more important things to do than watch this. Um, okay. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, just see the cheese. It's just, it just looks so good. All right. Mm. It's like blue. Alright, now let's get ooh, hot. Um, all right. All right, looking good, ladies and gentlemen. It's looking very good. Now for the most important part, the bite before the meal. The first bite. Great cheese pull. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Takes skill. Takes major skill. All right. So here we go. Let's see if we can get a nice cheesy. All right. All right. See that? Yeah. Yep. There we go. All right. Mmm. Dynamite. Really good. You'll have to make it sometime. I promise you. People will be impressed. It's a, it's a good, it's a good one. All right, cheers everybody. Have a great Wednesday night. And I will see you guys tomorrow night for the live stream if you can make it, for the George Strait live stream. Otherwise, I'll see you next week. Have a great week, great weekend. Talk to you soon.